think uh, who, who all of us talk about Israel Palestine. I do quite a lot. Uh, however, a lot of people have their interest. And you know, sometimes when someone is here at our conference, we don't think the person is too important, right? But let me just uh, just give you a, uh, just one liner. You all of you have seen the UNSC resolution uh, on two-state solution of Israel Palestine, right? We keep quoting it in all our debates. He's the guy who practiced, who actually wrote that resolution. So. So, uh, terrorism 9/11. All resolutions of 2001 on UNSC on terrorism. This is the guy who writes that. So, so what, what? So what we do and act in a model UN? He's been there, done that at the UN, and is still doing all these things. So, we can only dream of it. Yeah. So we can only dream of you know picturing such a scenario. Uh, now I will hand over proceedings to our Honourable Sir, he has his experience to share, uh, he will be sharing his experiences with you. So, Peter Sir. Thank you very much. As all of you know, um, and there was a kind remark by Keshav, but the resolutions are not the authorship of one person, and in fact, if they were, they wouldn't be very valuable. But uh, it's not, I, that's not to say that there isn't inspiration from individuals both within government, governments, from outside governments, from within the UN Secretariat, from regional organizations. The inspiration can come from many quarters, and I know that there were people such as a Canadian a diplomat who helped launch the Kimberley process on conflict diamonds. People can make, individuals can make a difference, you can make a difference. Listening to you and your good ideas today on an issue which can have dramatic impact, uh, many of you know uh, when I spoke to some of you today in, in the course of our discussions that the issue of Somali piracy is, affects India. There are some 43 Indians who remain in captivity by Somali pirates. Um, there are seven whose testimony came out on NDTV and other channels yesterday. So what we were talking about today is not an abstract fake crisis, it's a real one. And it will require the, the creativity of different UN bodies, different international associations to begin to crack that problem and to look at some of the origins of it uh, and some of the pathways forward. I had the, the pleasure or the trauma of, uh, of living in Somalia during its time of crisis after the fall of Siad Barre. And so I know that Somalis, they're very good people. And so they're tarred by the, the allegation that all of them are pirates, and I think that's unfair. Um, but certainly many of them have a uh, few other alternatives and find their way into the realm of piracy and take innocent victims as a result. So. It's a complex problem. And if the one thing I can leave you with today, and I was chatting with some people, some of you delegates, uh, just before the end, of the beginning of this uh, uh, ceremony, was on the Israeli-Palestinian question. And one of the things I just urge all of you, in your model UNs, and eventually when you all become delegates or members of the Indian Foreign Service, is to listen and to think that in any debate, when you hear the black and the white, to realize that the reality is probably some form of gray. That the, because of the complexity, because of the emotions, because of the weighty issues that you're discussing, there's probably another side or many sides to a story. So I think that one of you, one of the things that you can take away from your experiences in the various bodies is to, that ability to listen, to hear somebody else make a compelling point. I heard many today. I'm just going to cite a couple because I think uh, we, we didn't have an accurate or, or uh, a real way to sum up this crisis simulation. But one of the things that people talked about was the concept of child piracy. I don't think that's something that's part of the UN lexicon. And yet, you folks thought of creative ideas. How do you do the DDR process for child pirates? Where do you do it? Those are good ideas. Um, so some of the ideas that you come to, one of the reasons I spend time as a diplomat listening to students is because you folks look at things from new perspectives. These are new issues, uh, and I think you can bring creative solutions to them. Not everything will be created, solved overnight. Many of these things will take generations, but you're a generation that I think has shown real interest in the United Nations, in your own government, in international affairs in general. So I'm really encouraged by the type and intensity of debate, both within high school students, but also within the college students who are here, from engineers to English majors, and others who, who take the time out from your from your hectic study and exam periods to devote yourself to paying attention, frankly. And that's something 
that I think is rejuvenating for the UN. And the UN, uh, as one famous American critic, uh, who I didn't work for, but who nonetheless I respect him for saying this, the UN is us, it's all of us, it's all the states. Even, if, even among those of us who are critics of the system, it's up to us as citizens of member states of that body to change it. And so I, I think that your commitment here today, this whole weekend, spending your weekend on this, is a real sign of that commitment. And I thank you for welcoming me in, into your committees and to see the deliberations as they proceeded. Thank you very much, and congratulations. Uh, before uh, Sir leaves, we would like to express... Uh, <laughs>